Hey traders, Chris Paul over here. Welcome to the Weekly Outlook, uh, the week of August 3rd through the 7th. We'll talk about all things stocks, forex, cryptos as things are moving. Uh, we got through a lot of earnings over the last few weeks. In fact, this week is actually pretty light on the earnings front. Uh, big tech in front of Congress, big tech looking at uh, ad revenue. Uh, it read an interesting article, actually my, my snacks this morning from Robinhood, the ad apocalypse of 2020. Uh, Twitter's ad sales plunged a disappointing 23%. Uh, Google, which makes up about 70% of its revenue from ads, had its first ever sales decline. Ever. Crazy. Uh, Snap sales jumped to a better than, better than expected 17%, but also fell on short user growth. Uh, compare that to the 44% sales growth that it notched in the first quarter. And Facebook, sales jumped and beat, uh, let's see, an ex expectation beating 11%. Uh, while investors were pleasantly surprised, that's much slower than Facebook's average quarterly growth of 25%. So we know that big tech has been a reason that the markets have still shown some bullishness and still, uh, you know, been drifting higher from this recovery, recovery. Um, but the reality is that even though there is probably a heavy, heavier concentration of social media engagement and usage, it's not converting into sales. Now, I know that I play... Uh, victim to sponsored ads every now and then. I get duped with some uh, some Instagram <laughs> sponsored ads. Uh, I'm sure we all do. Uh, but also, make sure they have a decent and liberal return policy because I've bought a lot of things and sent a lot of stuff back. Uh, but anyway, sponsored ads are around. It's just a matter of are we consuming, are we willing to spend? And the answer to that is no. And because of that, advertisers and products are, are cutting in that spending and cutting those marketing dollars back. So uh, that is a, a bit of a dent uh, in the kind of... Uh, infallibility of these big tech companies i think that's interesting as we get out of summer trading how things are starting to balance out you know we'll talk about the stock market we'll look at forex cryptos has been a big story the last couple of weeks uh bitcoin has crossed over 11,000 plus and looks like we have a decent run into 13,000 plus ethereum ripple litecoin link i mean all things taken off as far as cryptos goes which is pretty exciting uh i'm definitely liking where my portfolio is at right now uh, and stocks, I'm going to look to see, do I still have some dips? We've been talking about staying patient in stocks, you know, building around the, uh, the volatility ahead for the election. Uh, and, and, you know, school starts here probably in the next two to three weeks for most K through 12 and colleges. Uh, we're seeing professional sports that had all this optimism going into, you know, safe ways for the athletes to live together, you know, eat together, play together. And now COVID is starting to sneak into that. So the MLB season has been suspended. I would say football seasons are definitely in jeopardy, especially as colleges come back. Um, basketball doing pretty well in the Disney bubble and golf doing fairly well and being commended for its efforts for uh, for COVID testing. I know that uh, I actually have a friend this week that's going to be caddying at the PGA Championship and uh, caddies are getting tested every single week and players every other week. Um, so, and again, taking the necessary precautions to make sure that it is COVID free or as safe as possible. So we're not done, and there's a lot of volatility ahead. Uh, in another note, I did do some heavy recording this weekend uh, with my Keep It Seriously Simple video series, so I have one that's going to premiere today, and this has been a topic that I get a lot of questions on in my trading room and a lot of questions in general is, I mention this, you see this on the news, what is risk on, what is risk off? I have a great video on that. It's going to be about 19 to 20 minutes, and it'll come out today on August 3rd, so make sure you check that out. Uh, you know, Click and like this channel and subscribe, get the notifications. And uh, you'll see that risk on risk off video later. I also talk about the stocks and Forex correlation with that and put together a nice little plan to how I plan on trading the next five months and to make sure that I finish profitable in 2020. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into the charts. We'll take a look at stocks, Forex, cryptos. Before we begin, we understand there's risk in trading. Please. And always use trade capital only. Do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. Uh, if you're following them out there on social media, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I post this video, my weekly outlook on my YouTube channel, as well as my Instagram uh, handle, which is at Pulver Chris or at Pulver Chris. And uh, I actually post this on IGTV. So you can take a look on YouTube uh, or Instagram, whatever is more convenient for you. But uh, I'm trying to put all of, all of my stuff on YouTube and get them to tie in. So whether it's here or Instagram or I link it up on Twitter, Facebook, I want everyone to see that Weekly Outlook is available. Keep It Seriously Simple video series is available. And uh, I have about 100 gigs of content footage coming over the next probably couple of weeks. I'm just putting the final edits in place. So look for that coming very, very soon. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the charts. So let me get this out of the way. Uh, let's take a look. So we've got some great movement going on right now. Uh, we'll talk Forex here in just a moment. I want to go into the stock markets. So let's go to the SPY really quickly. Let's go SPY, the Qs, and the DIA. Let's take a look at everything really quickly. 
So here's the SPY, and we have had that slight break to the upside. You know, in fact, this is a weekly chart, so last week's candle, the SPY did close higher. Uh, as I said here, if we break 320, expect us to go to 335. We have a large gap there from that sell-off in March. We have February highs. It might seem impossible, irrational. There's no reason why we should be going to all-new highs again. However, right now, it's the path of least resistance, and I think we need to be prepared for something bigger ahead. If you take a look at that risk on risk off video from my keep it seriously simple video series, uh, I do have a pretty good plan in place for my next five months of trading. Uh, you know, look, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what is that exactly is going to happen over the next five months and neither do you and neither does anybody else uh, as traders. However, uh, we have to plan and prepare around what we're given uh, as far as the evidence. And I think that we will either continue this path of least resistance and the markets continue to churn higher so if we just continue to drift it may be low volatility it might be slow it might not make any sense we might be sitting here waiting for bad news we might be waiting for the markets to drop but they might not do it right we might just stay the course through the rest of the year and then have an end of the year sell-off or the santa claus rally continues and we have a really ugly start to 2021 all right, we might have a very volatile election where we just sit here for the next couple of months with a lot of uncertainty and we have a breakout above or a breakout below based on the election results. That's very possible as well. And those election results will likely take us into the end of the year. So whatever happens, make sure that we're not overly committed and overly biased. That's going to be the most important thing. If we have movement, the best way to be profitable is to make sure that you're following that movement and not getting stuck on the wrong side of it. Because what we should be seeing here over the next several months is a big move one way or the other. Uh, I would say that if the market does remain bullish, it's gonna feel it's gonna feel awkward. It's gonna be like reluctantly bullish. It's gonna be slower drifting, but just it won't stop. Um, I'm not gonna fight it. <laughs> one thing we can plan on trading is the volatility index. So I've talked about this the last couple of weeks. Trading the VXX. Trading the VIXY, trading anything related to the VIX or the volatility index, aka the fear gauge, it's going to be important that we watch that because I do expect this to go higher. Uh, I'm I am looking like at some option plays right now on the VXX. If I could do some uh, some simple calls, if I could buy calls around thirteen dollars, it's a little bit on the expensive side right now, uh, but we have suppressed price back into. 2850 if i could get gaps to fill around 15 or 16 dollars uh, i would like to own the vxx around those levels and expect it to jump up my question is are we going to go from the lows around 13 dollars to 70 80 dollars or are we going to have a fraction of that we might come back in and suppress this into these lows and then have a big spike by the end of the year which would pay really well if i'm filled around 15 dollars and it runs up to 45 or 50 bucks that's a great profit to take uh, it's it's most likely short term, and I'll probably take profit on it when I'm you know two to three hundred percent in profit. Uh, but that's one play I'm looking at uh, trading here over the next several months. Let's switch over to the Qs. This is the QQQ, which follows the Nasdaq. And uh, again, we took out the highs from February. Big tech leading the way, a lot of concentration. Uh, if if you take away big tech, this would not be nearly as high. Uh, but you have Google, you have Amazon, you have Apple, you have Microsoft, uh, you have Facebook, all big tech leading the charge and for the most part carrying the markets. Now the weekly chart shows good structure to the upside. There is a lot of support. You can see that all of these dips have made bottoms and we are making new highs. You in fact see the exact same thing right here. We came right back to a dip. Did we not? We have an equal low right there a V bottom, a little run to the upside. Don't fight this. We will probably stay in this for a while. Let me see if I can just draw this out. We will probably stay in this if it goes back down by the dip, goes down by the dip. Eventually the structure will change. And I would imagine that with this previous high from February, that when this does break, we're going to have a pretty quick sell-off. Uh, that of course could lead us into more trouble ahead. If the NASDAQ is going to drop. I would certainly expect the S&P and the Dow to drop as well. So overall, the indices, the ETFs which represent those indices, if we follow those, we will have a good idea of where the markets are going. So uh, risk on versus risk off. We will see how it plays out. If it stays bullish, that's risk on. If it sells off quickly and dramatically, that's risk off. And we have to make sure that we are positioning our portfolio accordingly. So I'm watching the SPY, I'm watching the QQQ, I'm watching the DIA. 
Uh, but if this structure can't break, there's no reason in fighting it. I know that it's tempting to buy calls out there and you know expect just to, to time this. But the hardest part about options is time, right? Time definitely works for you and against you. Uh, and this is what happened back in 2015 when we had you know doomsday predictors that were saying, look, the market's going to crash. And, it, and look, we had you know 17 to 20 percent corrections. They were sideways. But if you didn't time that right, you didn't make any money. So you can either look at an open call uh, to the downside or you can just not fight it right and wait for confirmation trade stocks accordingly or trade Forex Forex is a great diversified market where when we have risk on trading you can see it visible in the markets when we have risk off trading you can see it visible in the markets and just in general the market is super liquid it's the largest market in the world with daily transactions and it just tends to be technically obedient. So if you want good structure, support, resistance, and in kind of equilibrium throughout the markets, you will see that in the Forex market better than what you'll see in stocks. So yes, the Forex market can get irrational at times, but way less so than the stock market. So it's a good instrument to trade. Uh, let's talk about cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is at 11.3. Uh, we had some volatility, heavy volatility last, uh, well, I don't, this goes 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So yesterday we had heavy volatility. Uh, we end up breaking just above 12,000. Uh, if I go to the daily candle there, I'm just going to try to get a price point. Music crosshair tool. Uh, price point at $12,100 and uh, a little sell off, but again, not doing any damage to this. Uh, I was looking at this as a potential head and shoulders. Uh, we will see what this play is. Are we going to go from low to high? This mouse tool is driving me crazy. Uh, are we going from a low to high, a shallow pullback, and we break above? Now, if we stay above $10,500, then we will continue to creep up towards the 13700 mark, which was the high in 2019. I still believe that we're bullish, you know, well above 9,000. We're bullish above the yearly pivot at 8,150. The question really is, are we going to pull back into these 9,000 lows again to retest? And then off we go. Or is this the break, the pause, the go? And I'm looking ahead to either 13,700 or a blast off into this 15, $16,000 range, which just from a Fibonacci standpoint gets us into this extension so we have a pullback here in our blue and green zone that's a 78686 pullback we have our blue and green zone up here at 156 and 166 so if that's just you know simple symmetry on this this market should be able to push up towards the 15 and 16 thousand dollar mark uh, i'm sitting around 4500 dollars with bitcoin so i'm happy to see this go as high as it wants to go i'm also in ethereum which is doing quite well uh, ethereum made a nice sort of run back up towards these highs in 2019 right there we actually broke those highs Thumbs up for Ethereum, and I hope we go higher. Uh, Ripple made a nice little run. Ripple's been hanging out that plateau at 20 cents for a long time. We've made a nice jump to 31 cents. Now, the question is, can we sustain this? Can we break above 30 cents and keep going? Is it open to run to a dollar? Is it open to run to two and three dollars? I don't know, but I'll take it. For right now, it's at least an uplifting sign for cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's, it's certainly going to entice traders investors or just anybody to say hey i heard about this crypto uh, currency stuff i'll just go ahead and jump in and that's what happened back in 2017 everybody was trying to get a piece of a cryptocurrency whether it was bitcoin or others uh, there are lots of cryptos out there there's lots of altcoins as well so definitely be careful on those uh, i tend to stick to the majors so you know bitcoin i'm in ethereum i'm in litecoin i'm in ripple and that's it i don't really do a lot of experimental trading i'm not in uh, altcoins very much um, cause a lot of them have, you know, they had their initial, a coin offering and then they disappeared. <laughs> so I'm more interested in just a, a safe, a safe as can be digital wallet and, uh, playing the ones that have probably the best volume, uh, and, uh, not notoriety. I mean, I want to trade ones that aren't planning on going anywhere, uh, or it could become kind of the, uh, the, the, the gold standard of cryptocurrencies. So that's what I'm sticking with right now. Again, keeping it really simple, buying low and willing to hold to see where these things can ultimately run over the next maybe three to five years. Um, of course, you're tempted right now when you're like, oh, I'm, I'm up like, you know, right now my, my portfolio is up about 400%. That's pretty good. Uh, I'd like to take some profit, but I might not have the chance to buy as low as I have. So if I take profit now, that's great in the short term. But if this keeps running... I'm going to be, well, I can get back in, of course, but I'm certainly buying at way different prices. So I would rather just hold low and hold forever. And then at some point when it's like, okay, now I'm up 100 times my money. Now I'm more interested in cashing out. We'll see.
So that's a little cryptocurrency front. Let's go to the uh, the uh, Forex market really quickly and run through some trades. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about this Aussie CAD. It's finally starting to work in our favor. It's finally starting to pay out. We've got some great technical levels on the Aussie CAD. Um, I'm looking to take this back down below 9,200. So we've had a nice little run up into this 18127 zone. I fully expect this to fall back into this. Uh, this is around 9,125. Um, like I said, if I if we get below 9,200, I'll be really happy. If you're looking at a very probable target for the Aussie CAD, 93.25. 93.25, in fact, is 93.26. We want to write that down. 93.26 is a monthly target from July. Now, that is three in a row. We've already come back to hit August target to start out the first week of trading in August. Uh, if we're forming a top, we're going to start a correction phase through August. That is perfect. So let's see this thing give us a correction phase into that 93.26 level. Let's see it drop a little bit lower into the 2.36 and the 3.82 level. Uh, I'd ideally like to take profit anywhere below 9,200. I've added several trades in here. If, in fact, if I look at my open positions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I have eight open positions on the Aussie CAD. I am definitely looking at a nice chunk of profit below. 93.25 will be a nice chunk. 92 will be a great chunk. So anything below 9,200, uh, I'm going to be really happy with those profits. Uh, Aussie Swiss, I'm not trading. Aussie Yen, I'm not trading at this time. Aussie Yen, uh, we've talked about these directions. Look to sell these equal highs. If we start to break the right side of this trend line, then it's going to look good to the downside. Now, I did tell traders to keep an eye out for this. Okay, we might see price. Come on. All right, I'll just use a freehand tool. Uh, we might see price doing this goes a little bit higher a little bit higher just refuses to break the trend line and then it ends up dropping and if that is the case then look for the confirmation to get that drop to the downside right if that happens <laughs> that looks ridiculous i just want my epic pen to work uh, so there's the trend line right there on Aussie Yen. We look to sell this at the high around 7650 7700 just watch this trend line look at all the indecision one, two, three, four, five. We have six candles of indecision. If you're watching this closely, if we get a break below seven, four, eight, zero, if we have a close below seven, four, eight, zero, this looks fantastic to the downside for a couple hundred pips. That could all happen this week. So watch that seven, four, eight, zero level uh, for confirmation to the downside. Or if we come back and revisit the high, we can look to sell this up towards the 7,700 area. Again, selling at high, stop area above. Look for this to start going down towards these previous lows in mid June. That's 7,250. Aussie New Zealand's. Aussie New Zealand, more indecision. We're at 107.70. Uh, we did take a sell trade on this last week in my trading around 107.75. Our stop area is above at 108.50. We're trying to get this back down towards 106 or lower. Uh, we also have some short-term targets in here, short-term patterns based on harmonics that are looking around 106 to 105.50. I would like to see if this can fall a little bit lower between 105 and 103. That's a profit level for the bears and a big buy area for the bulls to start loading back up. And I will be one of those buyers. I will buy this thing 105, 104, 103. I'm going to load back up and take this for a long-term trade to the upside. Aussie dollar, another one that is quite ready to drop and finally falling. Uh, we had a nice little high. I sold it again around 71. What was that high that I sold it at last week? Uh, I put in an extra trade around 71.80. So uh, my break even is right around 71 in change. I'm trying to think. I've got uh, 71.30 right now for my break even, uh, which is fine. So I'm in profit on the net position. If we break this trend line, I'm looking for this to drop back into 67.75 previous lows. We also have a nice little inefficiency in pocket at 6700. So I'm going after pretty conservative levels on the Aussie pairs, but I've got it priced enough that if it drops to 67.75, I'm nicely in profit with a break even above 7100. Aussie CAD, if we get down to 93.25, I'm nicely in profit. Which leads me into a nice little segue for another Keep It Seriously Simple video module for add to winning trades. Uh, that's been a question that I've gotten a lot in my trading room. Uh, and I think that's a great subject for traders that are a little bit more experienced to understand how you can keep that risk very small while also growing those profits, letting those winners run. And again, it's, it's you know, you hear the textbook definition of, you know, cut your losers off quickly and let your winners run. This is kind of a more realistic version of that because, you know, my job is not to call the bottom. My job is not to call the high. My job is to be profitable. Now, if I'm right in the direction at the bottom, 
you know, or bottom area, not necessarily exactly the low, but if I'm right enough to hold a little position at the lows and then let it rally, or I hold a position at the highs and I let it fall, I get paid on that. So I build those positions up small and then I add to them confirmation. So look for that video on my YouTube channel as well. That will be for uh, adding to or adding to winning trades. Right. Uh, so Aussie dollar looking for this to break the trend line officially get down to 67.75 or lower. If it still drifts higher again, watch the stock market, right? If the stock market refuses to drop, the Aussie dollar will probably stay afloat and it won't break this blue trend line. If it does, then we're going down as we should. We should drop. We should balance. So I'm looking for it to drop into 67.75 or lower. Uh, CAD Swiss. The Swiss is actually quite weak today, which I'm happy with. The Euro Swiss is running nicely. So let me refresh this for the last couple of minutes. Uh, we have CAD on top today. We have dollar on top today. We see the Swiss is one of the weakest currency pairs. The Aussie New Zealand as well. Uh, and then we have the yen, the euro, and the pound at baseline right in the middle. But um, yeah, strongest currency pairs today, CAD and dollar. Swiss is the weakest. So I'm loving Euro Swiss heading back up to the upside. Hopefully we see some fresh highs. Come on. Let's go 110 on that Euro Swiss. So cheering that one along. But uh, Aussie dollar should be able to drop through um, around 6750 to 6700 on a conservative level. Uh, this yellow area for me is also a big profit zone. If you're a seller, you know, looking to protect your profits in that yellow zone, that starts around 6700 and gets down to about 6300. Uh, CAD Swiss, nothing on that one right now. CAD Yen, I believe we're still in a range. Look at that fake out from last week. Oh, love it. So traders were with me on a breakout to the upside. We took a small loss because we told it to buy or sell. This is a robot trade from my system called Right Trader Max. We had a buy trade at the high. And, and again, it was confirmed. We had a daily breakout ahead. And I said, look, if we break the highs, we're probably going to drift up to this pocket and this previous high around 81.50. Well, it was a 40 pip loss. And then we ended up making about 150 pips to the downside. Not too bad. Now on the downside here, we broke lower and closed lower only to fake out. This is what the market does. Traders that are trying to buy the highs get stopped out. Traders trying to sell the lows get stopped out. So what are we doing? Well, we are trading whatever the flow is. And so, yes, if we break and go lower, we're going to be paid on that. But you can see that it was a fake breakout, a strong bullish candle as of Friday's close. And here we are today. So we're going right back up. The CAD yen picked up a sell trade, took a small loss, picked up a buy trade. It is currently running in profit. Going to take profit around this 79.50 area or back to these previous highs. So this is, you can tell that the market's being tricky with us. Uh, we're going to make a little adjustment to this and see that, okay, we now have to respect, you know, maybe this high, which is just a sneaky little high. And this low is a sneaky little low. So we're going to look for confirmation above or below these areas. If we're buying low, take profit and protect. If we break and go higher, this ultimately will get outside of this yellow box and go somewhere else, which gives me the reason to believe that I want to be in this trade. I want to be in it in some way, shape, or form to either you know scalp it in between if it's indecisive or go with the breakout once we get above or below the yellow box. Okay, uh, Swiss Yen. This one is... Really choppy. I do think that the Swiss yen is going to find a way to grind its way up towards 118, and I hope it does. I hope it goes to 118 because I'm going to sell it. So for right now, I'm not doing anything on Swiss yen, but if we go to 118, I'm going to sell it. So between 1800, 1850, this is a big sell alignment for me to sell high and take it all the way back down into 114. That's target one or 112 or lower. This could be a much bigger trade than that, but I would easily go after 400 pips on that Swiss yen. Okay, Euro Aussie, we've done some pretty amazing work on the Euro Aussie and Pound Aussie. We've taken some profit. It's still heading back up, but there's some range resistance right there around 6,500. So if we don't make a firm break above 6,500, expect this to stay range bound for the next couple of weeks. If you are long from these equal lows on Euro Aussie, make sure you're trapping and protecting those profits. Okay, Euro CAD, I took a sell trade. I actually had a pending sell and I didn't get filled on it, which is aggravating. Uh, 5977 was the high. I put in a pending sell at 5995. Now, granted, it didn't hit 6,000. It was 23 pips away from it. But I thought if we hit 6,000, what a great spot to sell it. Uh, you can see that today's candle, you know, today's candle is pushing bearish yet, or Friday's candle from last week, a nice little close. All we did, traders, is come right back up to resistance and start to sell. That's all it is. So I'm still holding a 5510 short. I missed that entry around 5995, unfortunately, but I will continue to monitor this. I do think this will come back into 5400. If it does, I'm going to take my profit from that 5510 short. So if we get to 5400, I will look for that to be a protected profit zone, take about 110 pips of profit on the Euro CAD. Euro Swiss, everybody clap together. Quack, quack.
quack quack let's go to 110 so i'm looking for this to keep pushing uh it is just sideways right now but again i'm, I'm cheering on the bullishness let's get above these highs let's see a nice firm close above 108.30 uh, let's see a run into 110 that symmetry 110.45 is a yearly pivot so i'm holding for that level to get hit i remain long on the euro swiss euro yen i skipped one euro pound euro yen leave it alone uh possibly a ugh, possibly a bear pattern if we get it uh we want to see the euro yen it's got to find a way to drop i don't know man this thing makes me so mad so i need to see this happen i need to see the bears push price back down challenge the low maybe a bear pattern that produces that breakout so if we push back down quickly, we respect this high, we fall back into this green area around 123, and then we make a nice break to the to the lows. Now, we may not see much of a pullback. If we just start to drop, it might just drop all the way back down. I do think that if we respect this resistance zone, we're going to fall back towards 120. So we're currently around 124.60. If we stall or hesitate and see some bearish confirmation, I think there's room to fall towards 120. So I am looking for that. I'm not forcing any trades in this one right now. Uh, the Euro Pound. We had some sell trades over the last couple of weeks. We did decide to take some profit. I still think Euro Pound is going to drop lower into 8,700. Uh, so we took a trade on the right side of the trend line, shorted it again, shorted it equal highs, uh, paid out pretty nicely, took a few profits. Plus we had robot trades and manual trades. So just close everything up to be on the safe side. We will look to see what happens. If it goes sideways, 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 that's fine. We'll sell it again high around 9,200, and we'll see where this thing goes. I have another pending sell way the heck up here around 9,450, just to throw it out there. I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to sell it at 9,450 and sell it nice and high and watch it drop a ton. If we go sideways here, I'm not interested in grinding that out. Um, I will let a robot do that. So that could be an equalizer trade, a perfect storm trade, although I do think this is probably going to be trend-friendly here in the next maybe couple of weeks. So I'm fine taking the profit that we did in the trading room for myself, and I'm just going to leave it alone. I think I'm happy with the profits. I'll go revisit this trade later. I think the one that has better potential is the Pound Swiss. So the Pound Swiss breaking above and running. We do have this one running with a right Trader Max robot. Uh, we have been long since the lows around 17, uh, 50 to 1800. This is actually long on my right Trader Max one hour chart. So there it is at 1873 long and currently price is at 20 uh, 1.20. So let's go. We're in the buy zone. Let's see some dynamic support. What we should be looking to run up towards is 1.22. So that high there is 1.2151. Look left on your chart. We have some wicks around 122 and 122.50. So as we get into 122, I'm going to take some profit and then reassess. Do we break and go higher? Is there further room to the upside? We are on the right side of this trend line. So break the nice trend line on the daily chart, have some bullish confirmation, and start to run. We could go back to the blue line and see resistance at 122, and we could fall back down. That's fine. Or we could break and go higher, right? We could break and go higher into the inefficiency from February. So another level to note is a nice little inefficiency in pocket, which is around 1.24. So I think I'm going to stay long on the pound Swiss. And I think if this plays out nicely, the Euro Pound will drop, the Pound Swiss rallies, and hopefully the Euro Swiss will rally to my 110. So there, be, there could be some really nice profits on Pound Swiss and Euro Swiss here over the next maybe two to four weeks. Let's go. Pound Yen. Actually, I skipped a few. Uh, we did Euro Pound. All right, so Euro New Zealand. I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. Euro New Zealand. Heading higher. So Euro Aussie. Going up, Euro New Zealand going up. Uh, I said this is a key level. We've we've been taking this thing long since the break around 7450 to 7500. It is now up to 7800. If you are long on Euro New Zealand, great spots to be trapping and protecting profits. Take a look at your candlesticks. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine daily candles in a row. Now we're not quite stretched to overbought conditions, but nine bullish candles in a row. Most likely we're going to hit some heavy resistance here around this low, which is around 7850. Currently we're trading at 7800. So it's made a nice little run from 74 to 7800 plus. Protect some profits. So protect those profits, move some stop losses. If it keeps running, that's why you have a stop loss in, and it's protected. If it uh, you know starts to move bearish again, respecting that support to become resistance, get stopped out with a nice chunk of profit. But good trade there on the Euro New Zealand. Uh, Euro dollar. 
everyone was all excited about chasing this thing and I just couldn't justify doing it. So I didn't, I stayed out of it. Uh, we had a high at 1900 and we've dropped all the way back down to 1700. I still think the round number at 1.20 can get hit. That was a, you know, just, the, I guess the comfort factor was I'll sell it at the end of the week. It's the end of the month as well. So if you wanted to sell that at, you know, 1850, 1900, you would have been paid in the short term. But that was really it. I don't really have big plans for the euro dollar to drop that much more. Uh, what we might see instead is the break, the pause, the break, the pause. We might still be heading higher towards 120. Um, I'm just going to stay out of the of the euro dollar. I think that the dollar Swiss is a better trade. Uh, I think the dollar Swiss has better pockets and better levels to come back to. Uh, plus, I think the Swiss National Bank wants a little bit more to do with that dollar Swiss and where it is exchange rate wise. So I'm going to stay out of the euro dollar for now and just be patient. But um, it was interesting to see it just go crazy and sneak that little move up above 1400 and just run like crazy to, fifth, uh, to, to 1900, a 500 pip run. Uh, but anyway, I didn't chase it. I know that some traders were in there long and grabbing some pips. Uh, I'm sure that we had some traders out there that tried to short it and fade it. And hopefully uh, you got paid on that as well. But again, I would be if I shorted that move, I would be taking profit because it's uh, short term and it did what we wanted. Pound Aussie. Pound Aussie heading nicely higher. We have been long in this one since the lows at 7,900. Currently, it's trading at 83. So, still long on Pound Aussie. Still looking great. Protect your profits. Move your stop losses. Again, look at the daily candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight daily candles in a row. Let's go. Take those profits. Move your stops. Trap those profits. Don't let it pull back against you. We've had 400 plus pips of movement in our favor. Don't let that go to break even. Right? Move that stop loss. 200 pips, 300 pips. Trap some profit. Uh, enjoy that we're probably going to have a little pullback. I do like long on Pound Aussie. I think if you think about this from the balance side, we have this large swing. This green area is just allowing this currency pair to come back and balance. A wild ride to the downside, bottoming out, moving its way back up into past support and resistance levels. So past support around 89.90. 1.90 is a round number. Let's see if it wants to continue. Pound CAD. Pound CAD is a bit on the wild side, but it actually has behaved just like we planned. Uh, I, I said if we can't break this trend line and stay below 7,200, then we got to be bullish on the break above 72. And it did that. We broke above 72. We ran very quickly to 7,700. That's a 500 pip run in about three days. So I know I had some traders that were scalping that with me to the upside, taking those profits. Now we can see that it is dropping back down, which I'm totally fine with. Um, a lot of structure inside here. Right. So I would say the trend, uh, I'll just keep this trend on the side right now. So we're no longer below 7,200, which means we're not bearish. Watch these highs and lows. So resistance at 77, where we respond in the highs at this point, I would say if we come back to revisit 7,700, I will look for some sell opportunities with some tight stops, trade it back down within the ranges. 7,700 resistance back down towards 7,200. If we happen to creep up a little bit higher towards 1.79 or 1.80, I still like selling high, taking it back down. So just overall good structure on this pound CAD to sell. Okay. Now, if you look at this from the longer term, you see this resistance, you see this support. This could be in a massive range right there. So we might come right back to 7,700 and fall or 7,900 or 1.80 and fall. Okay, fine. Well, that's what we want to trade. We want to sell high with a stop area above and trade this back down into the midpoint, trade this back down to all this beautiful support resistance structure. Uh, is it going to come all the way back down to the lows at 1.60? Probably not. Probably not without a ton of pound weakness. Um, but right now, I would say we're looking to sell it nice and high, uh, 7,700, like I said, a nice resistance zone, and 1.80 is the next level. So I would favor as is up towards these highs with that nice screaming move to the upside. Uh, we took some profit on pound cat to the upside in that break, so protect it. Now we're looking to sell high from 77 to 8,000. Uh, pound Swiss, we know the deal there. We should be running to 1.22. Uh, pound Yen should be just drifting a little bit higher. And we did, we are, uh, but respect the resistance. I'm not going to jump in and start shorting this, but I'm interested to see, does this resistance hold? Do we hold the highs around 140? 140.00. If we do, we start to break that trend line, then I think shorting the pound yen makes a lot of sense. Uh, we probably need to see some added volatility and risk off trading for the yen to be that much stronger. So that hasn't happened yet, so I'm not forcing trades on a lot of those yen pairs. Uh, Pound of Zealand's also rallying nicely to the upside. This is at 977. We bought this darn thing at 1.9015. Uh, 
Uh, man, did I get out of that trade way too early. However, we've been long. We said 98.50, so we are long in this one. We've been long since around 93, long since 9,000. I took some partial profits, let the robot run. The robot is in, the robot is running, and we are getting some nice profits toward 9,850. So within the next 75 pips, I will be taking some profit for probably, I've already closed out a trade for 175 pips. Uh, I should have another trade running for two to 300 pips of profit. We have a robot running called Right Trader Max. We have my sentiment strength line auto running to the upside. That's buy only. Once we hit 9,800, those robots get turned off and they've done every piece uh, or every task that I've asked, which is buy only, make me some profit. They've done that. Uh, we had the direction ahead of time. We're going after 9,850. So onwards to 9,850 for the pound of Zealand. And let's take some profit, get paid on that one early this week. Uh, that'll be a nice little chunk to add to our bottom lines. Uh, the pound U.S. dollar, with the dollar making a little bit of a recovery, uh, we're still stalling around that 1.30 handle. Euro dollar, pound dollar, uh, I know that we have some bearish patterns lined up. You know, we have, I believe, an eight-hour harmonic that should uh, pay us back to around 1.28. Um, I do have a robot running on that, but that's it. I don't really love the Euro Aussie, or I'm sorry, the Euro dollar. I don't really love the pound dollar either outside of the harmonic pattern. So if the harmonic pattern pays out, which tends to be around 70 plus percent of the time, I'm taking the trade. So we are based on that, but uh, I don't really know what this thing is trying to do. Is it in a big range? Are we going to come back down to 130? Are we going to come back down to one point? I mean, all this past structure at 1.27 could be support. Uh, I, I will say that if we're firmly above 3,000 and the pound dollar refuses to go back below 3,000, we're going to hold those levels and a breakout to the upside could certainly run much, much, much higher. Uh, we're coming off of major lows, historical lows, you know, post-Brexit lows. Um, man, we could see a, a nice run back into 140, possibly back to these highs around 1.43. So there's, there's definitely some upside potential on the pound dollar. I do think that if the pound gains some strength, then the euro pound is another one that will continue to drop. So we could see a nice little continuation in a lot of these pound pairs. Um, but again, 3,000 is always kind of a psychological number. I watch that little closely, and it seems to be choppy right now. So more price action needed for the pound dollar. Uh, New Zealand CAD, just like Aussie CAD, let's see this thing fall. We have a daily pattern. We have a weekly pattern. Let's see this thing drop. Nice bearish confirmation right there from last week, Friday. Uh, let's see if this will push a little bit lower. My profit target on this one is, again, conservative, 8,600 or lower. 8,600, 8,550. Love those spots for some profit chunks. Uh, my break even on the New Zealand CAD is quite high. It's around like 8,750, I think. So 87.55 is my break even. So if I get to 8600, that's a nice chunk of net profit. Uh, 85.50 even better. So anything in that realm, which is this yellow box here on my chart, I'll be taking some nice profit. Uh, hopefully this week or next week, I'll have some nice injections. Euro Swiss, if it pays out, fantastic. Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, New Zealand CAD, all these position trades we've been in for the last month or so, uh, they could really pay out nicely. So yes, it it. I'm not going to say it's. I love holding trades for a month at a time or longer, uh, but when we get these nice profit injections, we're patient on the trades. Uh, they do pay out really nicely, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. So profit injection coming soon. Uh, New Zealand Swiss, we'll leave that one alone. That's just sideways for right now. Uh, not breaking highs, not breaking lows, just giving it some time. New Zealand Yen, I know that traders sold the highs or were watching the highs. It may not be time. We might see this thing again, just like Aussie Yen, Drifting, 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 and then a bigger trade coming. Whether it's a full-on breakout to the upside or downside, I think that's going to be around the election, around COVID, around risk-on, risk-off trading. So watch the indices, watching the currency market, see how the JPY plays out. New Zealand dollar, I couldn't bring myself to chase this currency pair. I'm glad I didn't. Uh, we had a little bit of a false breakout to the upside. It's back down. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone, right? My plan for this one is to sell it super high at like 7,000 or to try to buy it again off the lows at 62. Otherwise, in, in its current state, I'm not going to touch it. Dollar CAD missed a trade on this one last week. We talked about buying this thing. I know traders did buy it right around 33.50, and that paid out pretty nicely. It's not a big mover, though. We had a nice bullish push off 33.50 to 34 and change. So not a big trade at all. We've had about 100 pips of profit. If you plan on holding this one, I would be holding this one at risk-free. No risk on this trade if you bought it at 33.50. If it does go higher, awesome. If it cracks the lows and we break below 33.50, if that support breaks, I expect this to drop into 3,000. 
So we're not done yet. This dollar CAD could still break the lows and head down to 3,000, which I would like to switch gears to selling if that is the case. Dollar Swiss, I remain long in this pair, and uh, I'm going to hold it. I, I think we have a nice daily and weekly pocket around 9,350 and 9,400. Uh, we have great structure back here around 9550. My base position for the dollar Swiss is down pretty low. Uh, my base position is around 9250. So currently trading around 9200. Not that far off a of break even. I can get paid at that pocket. I can get paid nicely at this area. So I'm going to hold on to this one. If we do have a little bit more of a drop, I already have the level noted uh, right back here in 2015's recovery from that flash crash move in January. Uh, it is a level of right around 88.50. So if we do drop any lower, then I'm going to buy it again at 88.50 and plan on this running back up to 95.50 or higher. Dollar Swiss. So Euro dollar, Euro dollar, no trade. Uh, Euro Swiss, I meant Euro Swiss. Let's go to 110. Dollar Swiss, let's go to 95.50. Aussie CAD, let's drop to profit New Zealand CAD let's drop the profit so position trades coming together nicely let's see some cooperation we have new monthly targets that are getting hit we have some of those ex you know those existing extremes and drifts and bar counts that I've been that I've been like waiting for end of the week last week end of the month starting to sell off nicely starting to balance August tends to be a top and bottom month August tends to be a transition month so we're getting things ready a couple of extra classes I have this week I'm going to be running a non-farm payroll session on Friday at 8 a.m. Uh, anyone out there, you don't have to be just exclusive to market traders. Anyone out there, if you're interested in joining me, um, I will include a link in this video on my YouTube channel. So my non-farm payroll session will start at 8 a.m. I'll post a link to register for that. You can all join me and we're going to trade it live together on Friday at 8 a.m. The news is at 8.30. We have CAD news and dollar news at the same time. Uh, my flex room will be this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll have a follow-up class and my momentum breakout max on Wednesday. Uh, we should have, we did have an update last week on the robot, and uh, we might have one more, and I'll talk about that in class on Wednesday. So it's going to be a busy week. Uh, very interested to see, you know, where these positions that we've been waiting for, if they start to pay us this week, get some nice profit injections, take those profits, protect those profits, looking forward to be, you know, in cash, neutral, ready to position accordingly. Whether it's stock market bullish, stock market bearish, how's that translating to uh, the currency markets? Again, take a look at that risk on risk off video in my Keep It Seriously Simple video series. And let's have a good week, everybody. Uh, join me for the Friday session if you'd like. All traders are welcome. All people are welcome. See what we do in the trading room. See what it's like to be you know, in the markets and watching things happen and unfold and make good decisions. And uh, it's going to be a busy week, but a fun week. So see you all. Happy trading. Lots of profits. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.